welcome back, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us. Frank Tomano is our guest. Frank's our go-to guy for local history. Uh, Frank, uh, before the show, I said we talk about uh, uh, movie theaters. <laughs> we got a little sidetracked there, but let's talk about uh, movie theaters. If there's one thing that Utica had back in the day, they had a lot of uh, corner grocery stores, a lot of uh, neighborhood bars. Uh, they had a lot of, uh, of local uh, uh, neighborhood pharmacies. Neighborhood and bakeries, neighborhood yeah, barbershops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And uh, they had neighborhood uh, movie theaters. Oh, yeah. What's uh, the What's the one that, of course, you're an East Utica guy, so yeah. you were probably right. Well, the Rialto. East Utica had two, the family on Bleecker Street on their Kasut, and the Rialto on um, uh, Nickel and Lansing. Uh, and and um, in my column soon, I'm going to run a photo of the old Colonial, which was on uh, Bleecker Street in Charlotte, about where the Utica School of Commerce later was up. Uh, on operated. that same I, side I, of the street? Same side, yeah, on, and on same site. Mm -hmm. Later, when they tore it down in the 50s, uh, Boston Store built an annex, yep. and then that was torn down, and they built the Utica School of Commerce. But the Colonial, uh, built in 1906, it really was our Stanley Performing Arts Center. Uh, Broadway shows, vaudeville, burlesque, it was, it was really, it had, you know, um, um, dressing rooms and it had, had a, a bar in the basement. That would have made, you would have gone yeah, there, right? Yeah, I would have yeah. gone there. Uh, it was just... And there was another burlesque house with a stage, not just a movie theater, they showed movies there, but they could also do vaudeville and then I can never remember if it was the Avon or the Utica because they were both next door to each other. Well, the, the Colonial had burlesque. It probably was, the Utica had vaudeville. Yeah. The Avon was really um, high class. It, it was up there with the, later it was replaced by the Stanley, but uh, had a huge stage, seated, I don't know, 1,500 people, big dressing rooms. The Avon was, and then again, right later became a, a movie house. You know. The, uh, my favorite, and I'll ask you what your favorite theater was in a second. My favorite theater was the Olympic. You know, the and it, I can remember going, I was a very young boy, and the ushers were in uniform yeah, oh yeah. with white gloves yeah. and a flashlight, yeah. and uh, they would see you to your seat, oh yeah. and don't you dare bring a soda to that seat. Exactly. Yeah. Same with the Stanley when, uh, when I was a kid. Uh, the Avon, I don't, I don't think they had uniforms, but uh, yeah, the Olympic was, um, and you're talking about first run movies. The Avon and the Stanley mostly showed Warner Brother movies, you know. Um, the Utica showed anything, but, but uh, the Olympic was 20th Century Fox, and it was, it was um, really, it was a movie house. The Olympic, I don't think it had a big, it had a small stage. Once in a while, the manager would come out and say something, you know, try mm -hmm. to sell a savings bond or war bond or something or other. But uh, the Olympic, and those three theaters were within like 50 feet of one another, three first-run movie houses, and they were always crowded. Of course, you didn't have, this was before television, you didn't have, in, in my day, you didn't have television, so. Well, what I would do, Frank, that's a good point you made about the three uh, movie houses right there. I'd go down on the corner of uh, Lafayette and what would be? Washington. There? Washington. Yeah. I'd stand on that corner yeah. as a boy and look at the three marquees, marquees yeah. and decide what uh, movie yeah. I wanted to go see. Yeah. And you saw a lot more than one movie. Yeah, oh sure, yeah, you always had the, uh, um, we had double features. And some of the second features were all the Sherlock Holmes movies and the Charlie Chains. Mr. Were all were all second features but they were really well done in, yeah. the, in, in, in those days. And every neighborhood, with the exception of, I'm going before the, the uh, you know, Riverside Mall um, and the North Utica Shopping Center, North Utica, was, all the neighborhoods had a theater. You know, you had the Highland, you had the Lincoln, you had the James, you had the Orpheum, the Rialto, the Family. I know I'm, mi I'm missing some. There was one on Varick Street. Uh, they all, they all, and, that was the place to go, you know, for 15 cents, 20 cents, 25 cents, you could, uh, and, and for kids, it was perfect, especially yeah. on Saturdays, you know. You know, you think uh, all those theaters that you mentioned, they're all gone. The Uptown is still there, but it's oh, yeah. not a movie house. Yeah. Uh, but we've got the Stanley. What a, what a oh, save that oh was. Oh, huh? my God, yeah. Thank God that uh, 
they were able to save that. Can you imagine they were going to tear that down? Yeah. And I remember the OD ran a story. There were three options. One was a shop, um, a discount store, a parking lot, and a restaurant. Oh, yeah. can you imagine that? Yeah. Well, the other one to think about, too, when you say that, my mind goes to uh, uh, Utica's Union Station. That came well, very close to getting torn well, down. Well, almost within two weeks. I was city editor at the time, I remember. Um, uh, they said, I just can't imagine them putting a bulldozer or yeah. or to, to the Union Station. And really, the man who really saved that was Nick Calagero. He was assembly. You know, you took the words out of my mouth. Yeah, he yeah. got money to yeah. repair the roof, and then the yeah. ball start rolling, and it was saved. As always, thanks for coming yep. in. It's always a pleasure. Yep. That's going to do it for us this week. We'll be back next week. Don't forget cnyhomepage.com. There's always lots of good stuff there. Until next time, take care of yourself, everybody.